You know, it's hunting season, and a lot of you have been hunting for what? A great chili recipe. Traditional it is with some good old southwestern dried peppers, but also it's got a little beer in it. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the barn on a dreary, wet, cold December day. And I'm thinking something that would warm me up more than anything is some chili. But I'm not talking about just your ordinary chili. I'm talking about some good venison chili, deer chili. But folks, we're going to add some beer to it. A beer will tame down the hops in there. It's going to help tame down some of this gaminess. But the most important thing really that we got to remember too is how we treat that deer after it hit the ground. Now folks, if you don't want to see the processing of this deer, fast forward and skip ahead right there to the chili because we got some tips and tricks, but also what meats you can use with this other than this deer. I mean, you can use elk, you can use buffalo, you can use beef. Hey, we're gonna give you all of it to where you can make it work no matter what cut you're using. It's my grandson. Y'all might remember him from what? The cookie challenge, but also the <laughs> breakfast burrito made out of spam. He has done outdone me again. I went and killed this buck, but he needed grandpa's help a little bit, just like he did in cooking to go ahead and process this deer. So proud of you, Cade, buddy. You and Deal done a good job. Really, when you've got a deer, you really need a good knife, got a gut hook on it, really is what I call it. So when you come up there and pull that skin, you'll reach in there and then you can just pull it to you and you're not getting into that body cavity in any way to where you're uh, getting a lot of blood in it. So that hook knife, it is what's happening. We gotta get pictures now. The great white hunter. First thing I'll show you, see scent glands that's right here on this deer, going hot. Little bucks will roll them together and uh, they always got scent gland everywhere. This is something that we don't want anywhere really near the meat is that gets on your clothes it'll stay a while too the most important thing to get really good deer meat uh in your freezer is how you take care of it once it hits the ground and uh, always try to gut that animal as quickly as you can uh preferably it's best you know you get a good clean kill shot right off the first let's get everything out of there you know just go be sure you don't cut that body cavity in any way when you're separating them ribs because we don't want to spill none of the abdomen or anything on the inside of that deer. Out, it's better if you got that deer where you're laying on a slope. That way everything pulls out a whole lot easier. And then get him to the closest water hose that you can get. And let's get him rinsed off really good. And they may not know this one. I don't think he's ever been in a video. This is my oldest grandson. He was, Dylan. he was, uh, oh, he, he was tested. The, the burrito challenge yeah. where I got cheated again <laughs> on that deal pretty bad. You know, it's a, it's a good deal runs in our family and we, we don't hunt for horns. Uh, we're hunting for meat because we do love some jerky. And uh, so, there's gonna be a lot of jerky meat here, but uh, tell me uh, how this hunt went down. I wanna know the story. Well, we were sitting there. We got a little late start because Caden didn't wanna get up. <laughs> but we showed up just before it got light. We were probably in the blind <laughs> for probably, I don't know, 10 minutes before the feeder went off. Sitting there scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> and uh Caden looks up and says there's a deer out there and I said all right so I looked through the binoculars and I look at him and I say well you might want to shoot him I don't know he's pretty good size and so he gets his gun up there and he keeps walking towards these trees and I'm trying to get him stopped and I finally have to yell at him to get him stopped and right when he stops I'm I'm saying all right whenever you're ready and about whenever I get whenever out all I hear is ooh <laughs> <laughs> It's loud in there too. It is. <laughs> now folks, let's talk about what I said was the most important thing and that's how we treat that deer after you've harvested that animal. Whether it be a deer or an elk, we have to take care of it immediately. I'm not talking about throwing it in the back of your pickup and hauling around showing how big the buck was as you drove all over town to all your neighbors. Now folks, after you've got that thing hung up there, and if it's cold enough, like I say, if it's like 38 or 40 degrees during the day and you're getting down by 28, 29 like that at night, and you can hang that deer three or four days, leave that hide on him. That's just insulation. Everything's gonna be all right. But if you live in a warmer climate like we were in, gotta get that deer skint right that minute when you get him to the barn. Now, if you got to hang this deer for three days or four, 
And I've known people that'll hang them five, six, or seven if they've got the cold weather or they've got a cooler they can stick it in. That's even better. But I always still am going to go back after I get this meat quartered for a deer. I'm going to let him soak overnight in some ice water. Clean him off really good, then he's ready to go. Then we can go to processing that meat, whether we're making jerky, steak, stew meat, hamburger, sausage. We'll be ready. When you put this in the ice chest, you've got all that meat in there and we fill it up with water. I'm gonna let that go 24 hours. Now it's not just water, folks. It's got like four sacks of ice in there with it. Then gonna drain all that water off after 24 hours. Rinse him really good. We're gonna fill it up, pack it with ice again. We're gonna do this three days, three days in a row till that water is clear in that ice chest. It's helping take some of that gaminess out of there, but it's gonna sort of turn that meat a little whiter color. What you doing, Bill? It's a deer washing machine. There you go. Let's look in there and see what's happening. Make sure you're doing some good. We're going to get all that water off over it, rinse it again, and uh, then we'll pack it with ice and a little water, and we'll change the water every day. Now, when we're talking about really authentic chili, it was never ground meat. It was always more of a chunk meat or strips of meat. So I really like to use a, a deer roast for this. Them back straps and stuff like that, they're gonna be saved, folks, them are steaks. But I like to go ahead back there in that hind quarter and let's get some of that round roast out of there. You're gonna get one that comes out that probably most of the time gonna weigh between a pound and a half to maybe three pounds on a large deer. But you've got a map there. You'll see where them muscles have been lined out there and it's just a perfect place to cut. This is both hind quarters, the deer, and uh, I was telling Bill, and you can see there's a road map everywhere in here by the different muscles that come around that you need to separate. And you see this one's on the top side, and you'll we'll follow that grain and that line around because that way an individual muscle, all the grains gonna be going the same way, which is gonna make it a tender cut of meat. And I know never ever in my life have I ever cut deer bone to where the, the bone meal is on the meat. To me, that really gives deer meat a bad taste, the bone meal that's mixed in there with it because you're never gonna get it all off. That's why we try to, to bone everything out and then we'll separate it. When I slice down this muscle, look at every individual muscle and tendon that comes with it. The reason I did this is to show you, we'll have to come back and peel this meat to save it all for stew meat, chili meat, ground sausage, but that's why you separate each muscle. But the most important thing is when you get that roast out of there, let's get him back on this cutting board and let's make sure that we have all that silver skin, all that membrane off that we can get off because we want the cleanest cut of meat that we can. This roast, we've got it all chunked up there. And you can see that I have, that water is pretty clean. It is because I have drained it twice and put cold water back on it, kept it in the ice box. This is three days now. But you can see the size it is, and some of that meat is sort of turned like a whitish color. Let me get the colander, and we'll go ahead and drain that. Always, when I cut this meat up, before I get ready to cook it, I go back through there, and I look on every piece. This is the membrane, or the skin that I'm talking about, that needs to come off. You want to just go, when you go through there, just make sure that you get all that silver skin or any of that membrane off there that you can. Deer fat is not good fat. And what, I, what, is, what does that do? Or just... To me, it'll just ruin the flavor of deer, but also it's going to make that gamey taste even worse. Now, these scraps that you have, they can be eaten by the spectators that you have on site. Two pounds of meat that we're using today, and you can see it's chunked up pretty big, but we're going to go back through here and chop this just a little better here in a minute. If you don't have deer and you want to make this recipe, remember, you can go to the store and get you a chuck roast and you'll be just good to go. Uh, don't be thinking that this is a recipe that'll only work with, with venison, because it's not. Now, if you've got a meat cleaver, you can do this. Now, you can leave this hole and just cut it in smaller pieces if you would like, like this. Me, I'm just gonna do a rough chop with this old knife. It's, that's what we're after, and the reason why is it's gonna get done quicker and be more tender, but that's really the way traditional old chili was made. Once you get all that chopped up, Go ahead and get you about a half a cup of flour and some of our mesquite skis in it, and let's make sure that it's mixed really well in there. Uh, the flour is gonna help thicken this chili up a little. That's why we like to use it, but I like to brown this meat too. So we got us a, 
little avocado oil in here and we're going to get it browned up for three or four minutes and then we're going to put a whole white onion in there with it. Let's go ahead and get that diced white onion in there. You got to stir it till them onions get tender. Get it mixed in there with all that good venison. And folks, it is raining and it's about 40 degrees and I can't wait till it gets done. But I can't walk off and leave it because we have a new visitor here and we just call him Big Dog. <laughs> he will eat a whole Dutch oven if he get a chance. Let's go ahead and mix this tomato paste in there with it. Just get this incorporated well in there to where everything is, looks like it's, it's pretty smooth. It'll take about maybe two minutes at the most. Well, we got that set aside. We did. I need you to put you on some boiling water. That is going to be enough to cover what? Four Rama tomatoes, two Cascavel chilies, whole, one. Oh my oh. gosh. Don't eat it, Duker. One ancho chili, four garlic cloves. We're going to let that boil to the skin on them tomatoes cracks and them peppers are really tender. And then we'll go back to our process of making this chili. We got them boiled up right we did and drained the water off of them we did. Be sure and drain that through that colander and make sure, see if you can get everybody to find a home down in here somewhere. You do the stem also? Yeah, because we're going to strain it again oh. before we uh, use it. Put her in that there automatic Christmas tree blender and see can you find something to turn it on with. Well, we have got the chili in the pot we have. We have got this blended up, but folks, remember the stem and them seeds is in there also. So we're going to strain this one more time. This is the good part. This is what the magic is made out of right here. So we have that all strained in there. We need a cup and a half of beef broth. Set that over there. Now folks, traditionally cooking wise, all of the old Mexican cooks that I ever knew put a little cinnamon and a little bit of cocoa in there. Gonna be a really rich taste. Need about a teaspoon. Oh, that's it? That's it, it don't take much. But to that, remember I was telling you about the hops in that beer that was gonna make things right? Well, today it's Budweiser, folks. You can use dark beer, light beer, light beer, I don't care. And so what is this? The hops that are in the beer and the alcohol is going to take some of that gaminess away too, but it's going to smooth out that cocoa and everything in there to where it is just going to be such a rich flavor. We got the beer in there. Here comes the great debate. I mean, this is better than any presidential debate, any debate you've ever heard in your life. You folks make up your own mind because traditionally when we made chili at my house to make it go further because we didn't have a lot of meat, what did we add to it? Beans. Oh, some of you is already shutting the computer off, turning the TV off, backing away and saying I'm quitting. Folks, you ain't got to put them in there. Kidney beans. Yes. Now, for kidney beans, I'm just going to tell you, if you want to make these fresh, you can just get you a pound of kidney beans, pour them in a pot, cover them with water about two inches above put them on some medium heat, add you just about two teaspoons of salt, a little bit of bacon fat, let them cook till they get tender. That's all you gotta do to them because we're gonna season them with what's already in this pot. Back on the fire, we got our beans in there. Everything is looking good. Got her on medium heat, folks, because I don't really want this to boil hard. I just, we're gonna let it simmer, pretty good simmer, you know, for about 45 minutes. But we gotta add some chili seasoning to it, we do. So we're gonna put about that much to start out with. We'll taste it here in a minute and see if we need to re-season. Don't forget you gotta stir it occasionally. If you need to add some more beef broth, you wanna thin this down. How hearty and thick do you wanna make your chili? That's entirely up to you.
I, I probably went nearly an hour letting it simmer really slow, but uh, make sure you stir it pretty occasionally because them beans, remember, they can lay down there at the bottom and ain't nothing worse than a burnt bean in something. Now, a lot of people are going to have a discrepancy here again, sort of like the beans in the chili. Uh, I prefer crackers with my chili. Oh, you do? Yes. And I would. I made cornbread for you. Hey, that's fine. I'm going to eat it. Folks, this is very easy. You can do this with a chuck roast. It doesn't have to be deer, but the flavors that you're going to get out of here are just going to blow your mind. And I can't wait. I'm cold. The cocoa, I think, is really jumps out there. Remember, it wasn't much, but also when you can blend that cascavel chili and that ancho chili to bring it in there, because that ancho is going to bring about a little chocolate taste as well to go with that cocoa and then the cinnamon in there and the beer. You can think to yourself, I'm going to leave that out. But folks, it balances this so well. I think that y'all have had some deer scraps already. We got three, and then we have this new partner here leaking on Shan's coat here, who is still a little gun shy and camera shy. But it is some fine dining, and it make you want to do the south of the border chili dance. And it goes something like this. Yes. That's about That's enough. It. <laughs> That's about enough, it is. Remember, everything that we use today will be listed down there in the little links below. But also, don't forget about that new cookbook that's coming out. You can pre-order now. There'll be a link down there, too, to where you can get that comfort food the cowboy way. But remember, the cowboy is going on the ocean. Yes, it is. Y'all might have seen it already, but got a big cruise coming up 2024. Going to go out of Florida, go through the Caribbean. Cowboy's going to spread the love throughout the islands, he is. But as always, and it is with great pride and honor, I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying back there. To everybody who's keeping the country safe and everybody that's taking care of somebody, give them a pat on their back and an attaboy because they're doing a good job. The rest of you, come on in here. Come on in your clothes. I'm gonna give you one of them big hugs because I might have missed one. God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down the Deer Beer Chili Venison Trail. Bread crusty. He said, I have never had cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> he said, how do you eat this stuff? The heathen Higo Big, thanks for helping. Duker, you're the only one present, so y'all get to reap the benefits. You, Lou, are you here? I didn't see you, Lou. You're nasty. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Get back, Duker. Where, where you at, Schnauzer? Schnauzer, you're little, I can't find you. No, Lou, you don't had yours. There you go, everybody got a bite.